My wife and I own and operate Strawberry Hill Farm in New Brunswick. We've both done training in soil biology, and it's something that is key to the operation of our farm. So with that in mind, I'm doing a short video that I'm going to title The Dirt Paradox. We are at war with dirt in our society. We sweep it, we vacuum it, we mop it, we throw it out, we wash it, we clean it away, we sterilize, we vaccinate, we chlorinate our water, we pave over it, we build walls to keep it away. In short, we spend our lives trying to get away from it. What if I told you that this stuff we call dirt, which we're trying so hard to get away from, holds the secrets to life on this planet? That we owe our very existence to the dirt that surrounds us? Does this sound far-fetched? Let's change the word dirt to soil, because the soil is where most dirt comes from. Healthy soil contains an enormous biodiversity of living organisms, which do a wide range of jobs that no one else can do. These soil critters break down bits of plant debris, they build soil structure, they hold soil from leaching away, they store nutrients, and then release these nutrients when plant needs them. There is a whole universe of life that happens outside our public eye, and which goes largely unappreciated in just one teaspoon of rich, healthy soil. There can be up to a million species of bacteria, which is roughly equivalent to the million species of insects on the planet. There are about 10,000 species of birds on the planet, but there can be up to 8,000 species of fungi in this one teaspoon of soil. This one teaspoon can contain more species of fungi then there are mammal species on the entire planet. Okay, so now you're probably asking, what does this have to do with anything? Why is soil life important? We can't see it. What's the difference? Okay, so first I'd like to give a little history. After the last world war, chemical factories no longer needed to produce weapons and chemicals for warfare, so they turned to making chemicals for agriculture, and the so-called Green Revolution was born. Ammonium nitrate went from an ingredient in explosives to a chemical form of plant nitrogen. Chemicals were developed to kill insects and disease, and so for the last 70 years we've traveled down a path that has made farming easy to scale up to huge acreages of monoculture crop. Combine this with new plant breeding and genetic modification, which has made crops more tolerant of chemicals and has favored yield over quality or nutrient density, and we have a food situation today vastly different than it was 70 years ago. We've adopted a kill the bad guy approach rather than a support the good guy approach. But I thought it was just the Americans that do that. We're different. We're Canadians. Well, unfortunately, this kill the bad guy approach to agriculture has crossed borders and has spread over much of the world. The problem, as with American travel bans, is that when we target the bad guy, we also reduce the movement of good guys inadvertently, and quite possibly do more damage to the community as a whole than if we focused our efforts on supporting the good guys. Studies have shown that fresh fruit and vegetables today contain on average 15 to 75 percent less nutrition than they did in the 1940s. It is possible to eat till we are full while our bodies are starving on our feet because our food does not contain the essential nutrients we need. I was involved with a trial done by a carrot farmer in PEI where we used compost tea and natural foliar sprays to boost the biology around the leaves and in the soil and this resulted in carrots that had 20 to 40 percent more nutrients than the control group. Not only did the carrots have more nutrients, the soil calcium, magnesium, and organic matter increased as well. However, as long as carrots looked like a carrot and had crunch, that was really all the wholesaler cared about, so there was no cost-benefit to the farmer to grow a carrot with more nutrition. If just one year can make this much nutritional difference, imagine the potential when we carefully feed the soil life year over year. The chemicalization of agriculture, along with plant breeding, including genetic modification, that favors yield over quality has not only impacted the nutrient content of foods, it has also created a whole range of other ecological issues, which include runoff that kills fish, 
nitrates in well water, pesticide residues showing up in our food, dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, to name just a few. There is an old Dutch saying that says that chemical fertilizers are good for the farmer and bad for his children. They bring short-term gains in crops, in crop yields, but over time destroy the soil, making it bad for his children. I prefer to farm in a way that may be more difficult for me as a farmer, but provides nutrient-dense food for my family and customers, and will leave the land better for my children as well as the environment in my community.